Hi guys, let me tell you a story about Furbies. So about a year ago, I discovered the Furby fandom and I got so excited about it, I literally bought three Furbies off of eBay and I modified one. Skip to the time in the description if you want to just watch me modify another Furby, but if you want to stick around for my tale, then thank you very much. So I modified this Furby, her name's Goldie, She's a, she was a baby Furby, like a blue one, and now she's a, I don't really know what she is. And I realized that there is this entire untapped market of maybe cringe, of maybe delight that I have not, that I have not been privy to. So I made a Tumblr. One of my biggest regrets, honestly. I was so excited. I, I loved the Furby community. Everyone was so nice in it. It was a very nice, loving community. And someone was selling some Furbies, and I was like, oh, I really want a white one, because I want to try to uh, to dye the fur. I haven't gotten to do that yet. I've just been making new fur for it. And uh, gave him $20. That Furby never showed up. I joined the Furby fandom and immediately got scammed because I'm an idiot. So yeah, make sure you you, you learn, research your Furby dealers reputably, I guess is the, the tale that we're getting into. Anyways, but yeah, the Furby fandom was delightful. It was very warm and opening and becoming while I was in it for a half a second. But now I have... I have moved, I have found my old supplies, all of my stuff is littered everywhere because I still haven't really unpacked yet after five months, but uh, I found the skin, the horrifying skin of the other two Furbies that did not get modified, and I decided that I needed to breathe life into the other one. I'm pretty sure this one is never going to see the light of day because this is what he looks like now. I don't know if I can properly remember how to put him back together, though I do have all the parts. So we'll see if that ever happens. But yeah, if you guys want to know how I made this adorable little baby, then yeah, just watch the video. It's, it's great, isn't it? I don't know if this is interesting at all. I hope you guys like this. It really doesn't matter which order you do these two sections in, but the first section is going to be sculpting, and the second section is going to be making the pattern for it because there's two separate parts of the Furby. You've got the beak and the eyes and the faceplate, and you've got the fur sleeve that goes over all of that. I say do the sculpting first because you want to wait for all the pieces to dry and it'll give you something to do while you're doing that, but you can do this in whatever order you want. So when you first get your Furby, it's going to be pretty, pretty run-of-the-mill looking. It's going to have a fur sleeve over it, and if you flip it onto the butt of it, you're going to see a little tether that goes around the entire Furby and you're going to want to cut that with some scissors. And after you cut that off, you can remove the skin from the Furby and the modifications can begin. They have a face plate, which is really easy to modify and I just used some paper clay and did some sculpting around it to make it kind of look like a dragon. What you have to remember is you cannot cover up that little sundial part or else your Furby is going to think it's dark all the time and it's never going to wake up. And you can't cover up the basic part of the eye and the mouth or else the eyes won't be able to close very well and the mouth won't be able to move. Which you might like that look. Uh, this Furby right here, because I created a beak, it doesn't, have, it doesn't have the best movement when its batteries are plugged in. But if you just want a display piece, you can completely mess around with these as you want. I would pay attention to the ears, because the ears are made out of fleece, and if you want to use a separate fabric for that, then go ahead, be my guest, but you won't notice as much ear movement. The clay that I used for all of these modifications is paper clay. It's a super lightweight clay that is great for this sort of sculpture, because it moves around with the Furby. It doesn't weigh it down like something like Sculpey might do, because if you use Sculpey, it's super heavy clay. Now once you thoroughly de-skin your Furby, it's going to look a little terrifying, I'm not going to lie. Uh, it's going to have these two plates covering it, and if you dismantle it, you'll wind up with this absolute abomination and a bunch of Furby parts. But uh, I, I, if you're, I would absolutely suggest to completely dismantle it and remember how you did it if you want to do any sort of painting modifications, because if you don't do that, then you won't get a chance to put a lacquer on things, and you're going to wind up with a scraped eyelids, which happened when I didn't remove any of this one's parts to repaint it. And you're going to have, you're going to wind up with a lot of uh, little odds and ends once you take it apart. You're going to wind up with weird rods and uh, the eye caps and uh, the beak parts. But as long as you remember how they go back together, you should be able to put it together with some sort of a normality. Another thing people in the Furby fandom do is they modify the eye caps, and to modify them you have to get those suckers out of there, and I found this awesome way to do it. You just heat up a glue stick on the hot glue gun, press it onto the eye cap, wait for it to dry about a minute or so, and then pull, and you should get that eye cap right out of there. 
An eye cap is just a little piece of glass. Uh, doll makers use it. Uh, these are actually a little bit too small. These only work for the baby Furbies because baby Furbies and regular Furbies have different eye shapes. There's this whole world of untapped potential I didn't know about going into this Furby thing. All of the sculpting is done with paper clay. I've already said that, but I can't stress it enough. I love this clay. It is delightful. And I just sculpted directly on top of the faceplate and directly on top of the beak. I didn't even have to dismantle it too much to sculpt on top of the beak. I just had to get the faceplate and the fur off. I'm also making some other odds and ends for it, like horns, because I think those would be really cute. And instead of making a fur sleeve for the ears for this one, I'm going to be sculpting the ears because I saw this Furby and I thought that was a great idea. And it would keep movement in the ears, because if you make a new sleeve for the ears, you risk the fabric not being malleable enough for the ears to move. And, I mean, if you have a Furby, you kind of want it to, like, roll around and squeak and be just the dumbest thing in the entire world. I'm painting it with a luminescent paint because it's going to make it a little bit shiny, and this is supposed to be a glow-in-the-dark paint, but again, glow-in-the-dark, thanks a lot, good job, 10 out of 10. And I should be spraying this down with a lacquer, but I'm not, because I'm not doing this on commission and I just want this thing done tonight. For my other Furby, Goldie, the first one I ever did, I sketched up a design before I started making it so I knew where I was going, but for this one I'm sort of just winging it and going with the colors that I have on hand. I did the same thing with the sculpt, I didn't really know where I was going. I knew I wanted the feet to be flat because my last ones were up in the air, but that's about all I knew. And this is what all the pieces look like when they're painted and put on the Furby. Um, there's still a lot of white spots, I'm not, I didn't do it too well. but um. After you're done sculpting it, just set it aside to dry and you can start working on the fur sleeve. Something that is very common in the Furby fandom, they'll take the original fur of the Furby and dye it or color it, but I want to use some of my own furs that I have lying around, so I'm going to need a pattern piece, because I already threw away this thing's fur because it was absolutely disgusting and I was not going to keep that in my house any longer. So what I'm doing is I'm going to asphyxiate it. <sighs> and then I'm going to wrap this thing in duct tape, and that's how I'm going to get my pattern. Now make a hole in the duct tape for the Furby's face, because you don't need fur there anyways, and draw your pattern on with a random marker you had lying around. Remembering which way I want the fur direction to go to with arrows. And I'm going to be using three different types of fur for this. A shorter one for the belly, a longer one for the sides, and an even longer one for the hair tuft. I love mohawks on Furbies. I think they look really cute. I also like tails, but I didn't make a tail for this one. Next, I'm laying my pattern down on my fabric. I'm a little offended at how much fur I actually have lying around all the time, but we're not going to talk about that right now. So, I am using a nice dark purple, a lilac purple, and a very short white fur for the belly. I think short fur looks better on the front of a Furby. That's my own personal opinion. But I like the look of long fur on a Furby as well, so I kind of like to mesh the two. This is a really simple project to do if you don't have a sewing machine, because it'll take less than 20 minutes to sew together with just a needle and thread. I'm just doing a basic blanket stitch to get everything together and sewing the pattern pieces together in the way they were cut out. Also, I'm writing on each pattern to say which piece it is, so I just remember. Once all these pattern pieces are sewn out, I'm going to put it on my Furby, see where it looks, uh, cut some slits for the ears so the ears can poke through. I'm also going to do some dry brushing on this fur sleeve before I put it on, and I'm just doing that by taking some very watered down blue paint and brushing it onto the fur. Brushing through it is going to keep the fur soft even as it dries, and you just want to make sure you come back and brush it every 10 minutes or so. And that's how it looks when it's done. It actually looks really pretty. I kind of like the speckling look I got on the front because of the comb. I don't know. I think it looks really nice. Once the fur is dry, I'm going to try and get all this stuff on together. I like this version of the faceplate. They seem to have two different types of faceplates, but this one has large holes in it, so you can actually sew it to the fur before you put it on. I think that makes it feel a little bit more sturdy than just hot glue, because with the other one, you just kind of hot glue it on and pray. So I sew the bottom of the headpiece to the chest piece, I suppose? I don't know Furby anatomy. And now I'm going to put the entire thing back on the Furby. I press the ears through the holes first and then just flip the face on. There are two little spots where there used to be screws to hold the faceplate on, but I just went ahead and hot glued it in place because I couldn't find those screws anymore. And lastly, since I didn't have the right shape of eye caps, I just decided to use the hot glue method. I piped down a few blobs of hot glue in about the same size as an eye cap and just tacked down the plastic that I piped it out on. And once it dried, I pried him up with a butter knife and painted the backs of them a bluish color, and that's going to give him kind of ghostly blind eyes. This is how they wound up looking. 
and I think they look really cool. Um, they're not like, you know, pupil dyes, but I still think they look kind of cool, a little bit spooky. And once those are good and dry, you just hot glue them into the eye socket, not too hard. You can cut them down to size if you need to, the jagged edge isn't going to matter too much because it's hot glue, it's not going to be perfect. When putting the face plate back on, make sure that your eyes are still blinking and the mouth is still able to move because it could be on too tight if you're not careful. And once the plate is in place, I'm just going to hot glue around the edges of the Furby. Since I didn't make fabric ears, I'm also going to glue on the clay ears as well with a little tuft of fur behind them just to make them a little bit more dimensional, make them feel a little bit more like ears. And then I'm going to add on his, some horns because I just think those look cute. And this is the finished product. It's actually pretty cute, isn't it? And it kind of goes alongside my other Furby pretty well too, Goldie. But yeah, they're pretty cute. They're pretty stinking cute. I don't know if you learned anything from this video. I think it was a little bit of a hodgepodge of just, I'm very excited that Furbies exist, and I'm very excited there's a Furby fandom. So yeah, that was my trek down Furby Lane. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I don't know, it felt like a little bit of a random video. It's, I feel like it's almost similar to like my furry content, because it's a Furby, but I don't know. And it's a good use of uh, scrap fur, actually, because I've got a lot of random scraps lying around since, uh, since I've been uh, kind of cutting off my commissions and just getting back into the flow of regular life. So it's nice to get, to get rid of some of the supplies that I'm not going to be using. Uh, if you guys are interested, I've got some stuff for sale in the description, old fursuit stuff that uh, I do not need anymore. But uh, yeah, that's only have, that literally only applies to when this video is being posted. It does not apply to uh, if you're watching this video 10 years later. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you uh, aren't too creeped out by Furbies, because I know these can be a tumultuous subject for people. And yeah, 